Welcome to 1.3. This is section 1.3 in AP Calculus AB Complete Course by Mark Sparks. Today we're looking at limits of exponential functions. This is a brief lesson and there's really two ways that we can look at these exponential functions as we're looking specifically at their limits as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. And there are two approaches and you can kind of choose which one works better for you. And the first is graphical. In these examples we're going to see here, they're already graphed. If you prefer to use the graphical approach, then you'll need to memorize um, how these graphical func how these exponential functions um, look, what their graphs look like. And I'll talk about this very briefly so you can see how you could construct these yourself. But we have four exponential functions graphed here. And we can see in our first example, um, we have a value. I, we're actually going to start with this one here. We'll call this graph B. For this graph, we have a value um, a that is greater than 1. When we have a function that's greater than 1 and nothing is reflected, then that means that my graph to the right is going to increase um, without bounds. It's going to increase infinitely. And to the left, my graph is going to level off toward some x value, uh, sorry, towards some y value, and the y value it's going to level off toward is going to be this um, shift. If there were no vertical shift, this graph would level off towards zero, but because I'm subtracting two, I'm shifting the gra graph down to, I'm shifting this asymptote down to, and the asymptote is the value that I approach as I head off the graph toward negative infinity. So looking at this function graphically, we can then easily see that the limit as x approaches negative infinity, as I go to the left, is negative 2, my vertical shift. Whereas the limit as x approaches positive infinity to the right approaches positive infinity. I'm just going up. There's no signs of coming back down, and so it approaches positive infinity. Now things are a little bit different in graph A. In graph A, my value inside the parentheses is less than 1. It is a value less than 1. And when I have a value less than 1, what this does is essentially flip my graph horizontally. Now I'm leveling off with time. And as I go to the left, I'm increasing without bounds. So it's the same graph, but it's been reflected horizontally. And this is because I could actually rewrite this function in terms of this function, if I were to flip the fraction and then make that to a negative exponent. So it'd be negative x minus 1 minus 2. Because anything to the negative 1 exponent is its reciprocal. And these two interiors are reciprocals of each other. So it's a little bit of background there. But the important thing is that because this is less than 1, this is going to level off to the right and increase without bounds to the left. Therefore, as I take my limit, as x approaches negative infinity, I trace toward negative infinity, and I'm heading toward positive infinity. Whereas, as I trace to the right, I level off toward this asymptote, and again, this asymptote's value is my y shift. So, uh, and we can see that here, it's negative 2, and so this limit is negative 2. Looking at my next functions, so here we see a fraction, which means normally it would start high and level off. But this negative in front here, this is a vertical reflection, which means that my graph is instead starting low and leveling off. It flips the y values. Toward the right, that doesn't make a big difference because in both ways, I'm approaching my y shift, which in this case is negative 1. You can see my asymptote here. But because of this negative, instead of heading toward infinity to the left, I'm heading toward negative infinity as I approach, as x approaches negative infinity. Whereas as x approaches positive infinity, I still approach this asymptotic value of negative 1. Finally, this function is also a fraction, which uh, a value less than 1. It's not that it's a fraction, it's that it's a value less than 1, which again would mean starting high and leveling off. This negative in front, this is a vertical flip, 
which would flip my function this way. Ah, but I have one more flip. I have this negative right here. That is a horizontal flip. So I would take this blue and I would, instead of leveling off to the right, I would level off to the left. And instead of going down on the left, I would go down on the right. And that gives me this function here. So now as x approaches negative infinity, I approach that asymptote, which is at my y shift value, this big number here, 2. And as x approaches positive infinity, as I trace, I find myself heading down. I'm approaching negative infinity. So if you're comfortable with constructing your graph and flipping it vertically and flipping it horizontally, then this graphical approach can be really good because you know that as you trace to the left, um, you might approach as an asymptote, you might approach positive infinity, you might approach negative infinity, and you can just see that from the graph. So looking at these, this are three possible results for an exponential function. We saw negative infinity, positive infinity, and the constant. And specifically, that's the y shift. All right, but what about um, what about if I don't have those uh, graphs, or if I'm not comfortable with the graphs? Then we have another approach we can take. This other approach is to look at these analytically. So rather than at this time going through um, one, two, three, four, this has to do with the graph. We could also look at this analytically, and let's look at number one and see how we could do these analytically. So how could I look at this analytically? First, let's compare by just looking at it graphically. This is two-thirds, meaning that it would uh, level off, starting up high and leveling off. And then this negative on the x means a horizontal reflection. So I would just flip. I was leveling off to the right. Now I'm going to level off to the left, still up high. This would be my negative 2 here. And this would be my infinity. So as x approached positive infinity, as I approach positive infinity, I find that I also approach infinity. What would this look like analytically then? Well, I have two-thirds, and I'm taking it to negative x as x approaches infinity. Let's look at this as sort of a direct substitution. 2 over 3 to the negative infinity power. Now that's kind of a weird concept, something to the negative infinity power. So let's look at that negative exponent creating a reciprocal again and say, well, then that means it's the same as 3 halves to the positive infinity. And since um, I could also look at this as 3 to the infinity over 2 to the infinity, well, what's going to happen here? My top is going to get larger faster than my bottom will, which means this will approach positive infinity. Let's see this in another example, number 2. We'll look at it analytically. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this um, as a fraction just so that I can use my reciprocal ability. So I have negative 0.4 simple terms as 4 tenths. We could simplify that, but we don't really need to. To the x minus 4. And I'm taking this as x approaches negative infinity. So that gives me negative 4 tenths, squarely 4 there, to the negative infinity minus 4. Now we can do that reciprocal property. I have this negative here. I can get rid of it if I put if I change this to its reciprocal. So negative 10 over 4 to the positive infinity minus 4. Looking at this term then, I find that well, this is larger than 1. So some number that's greater than 1 is going to take into infinity is going to get bigger. Or I could say 10 to the infinity will get bigger faster than 4 to infinity. And either way, this term right here, this part, approaches infinity. But I still have this negative in front of it and this minus 4 left. So I'm going to have negative infinity. Negative infinity minus 4 is still negative infinity. I can subtract 4 from it. It's still negative infinity. So I get negative infinity there. Looking at this graphically, if I wanted to do this graphically, this is a value less than 1, so it's a falling, a leveling off function. And this negative in front means it's going to uh, reflect vertically. 
So what was going up is now going down. My leveling off is going to be at negative 4. Negative 4. And since this is falling, that's negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. So that's my graphical approach. Number 3. Lots of negatives here. So looking at this analytically, I can start by plugging in my negative infinity. Negative 2 thirds, it's negative infinity. I do not care about plus 2. Anything added to infinity doesn't matter. Okay, uh, I'm going to use my reciprocal property where I change the reciprocal to change the sign of the exponent. It's only the sign of the exponent that I get to change there. Again, 3 over 2 to infinity is going to become a bigger and bigger number, so this is going to approach, this part here will approach infinity, leaving negative infinity plus 3. I don't care about plus 3. My answer is a negative infinity. Looking at this graphically, 2 thirds is less than 1, so it's a leveling off function. My negative here means that I reflect this vertically. What was going up now goes down. And my negative here means I'm going to reflect this horizontally. So what once went right will now go left. Looking at this, as x approaches positive infinity, go ahead and bring my 3 here. This is going down, so negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, going to the right, I approach negative infinity. For number 4, I have, this is my number, I say in parentheses. It's not in parentheses, but that's what, I've got signs in front, I've got exponents, so that's my number there. That is greater than 1, so this is a growth function. It's going to grow. My negative in front My negative in front means that I'm going to um, reflect this vertically. What was up now goes down. And my negative on the exponent means I'm going to reflect this horizontally. What once went right will now, or sorry, what once went left will now go right. This number is my horizontal asymptote. That's what I'm leveling off toward. This is going down, so it's approaching negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, as I read to the right, I approach this value of 2. Let's see that analytically. So I have negative 2 to the negative infinity, don't care about the minus 1, plus 2. Okay, use my reciprocal property because I have negative infinity there. Minus negative 1 half to the infinity plus 2. This is our first time to see this. What happens to a value less than 1 as I take into infinity? Let's think about it. 1 half squared. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. That's a smaller number. 1 half uh, to the fourth is 1 over 16. That's an even smaller number. So I see a trend here that as my exponent of a fraction grows larger, the value grows smaller, grows closer to zero. And in fact, I find that this, as x approaches infinity, approaches zero. So I have negative zero plus two equals two. And I get the same answer either way. Number five, we'll look at this one graphically first. This is e. Don't let that throw you. E is approximately equivalent to 2.71, so that's a value greater than 1. This is a growth function. But I have this negative on the x, which means I flip it horizontally. What was left is now right. So this is leveling off toward a horizontal asymptote of 2 and growing toward infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity. Let's look at this analytically. e to the negative, negative infinity. 
plus 2. Don't care about the negative 1 because it's adding to infinity. That's e to the infinity plus 2. Well, e to the infinity, any large number, any number greater than 1, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 and gets larger and larger. e to the infinity equals infinity. And I don't care about adding 2 to infinity. My answer is just infinity. All right, number 6. Let's look at this one analytically first. Uh, I have 0.4 being taken to x as x approaches positive infinity, so negative. Uh, point, 0 0.4, we'll look at this one without changing it to a fraction this time. To infinity, minus 4. So this is a value less than 1. If I were to do 0.4 squared, that would be 0.4 times 0.4 is 0.16. 0.16, which is an even smaller number. So as I take 0.4 to greater exponents, I get numbers closer to 0. That means that, again, any number less than 1 taken to infinity will approach 0. Negative 0 minus 4 is negative 4. We can see this graphically because this is a value less than 1. It's going to be a decay function. It's going to level off. The negative here means that I'm going to reflect this vertically. So what was up is now down. My asymptote, horizontal asymptote here, is at negative 4. And this is falling, so it's approaching negative infinity. As x approaches infinity, I approach negative 4. Almost done here. Number 7 kicking it up a notch. We'll look at this one uh, analytically and then we'll see kind of what happens. This is the advantage to looking at these analytically. So looking at this analytically, we'll go ahead and plug this in. e squared minus x equals 3. Wait a second. All of these so far have been x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity. And really that's where we have to deal with anything particularly special. Because this is as x approaches 3, we're just going to treat this as a basic garden variety direct substitution problem. Plug it in, plug it in. So e to the 2 minus 3 is e to the negative 1. e to the negative 1 is 1 over e plus 2. And if we really wanted to uh, put these over the same fraction, I'd write this 2e over e. And get 1 plus 2e over e. Number 8, again, tries to trip us up. It gives us as x approaches negative 2. So as x approaches negative 2, I plug that in. 1 half, negative, negative 2, minus 3, quantity plus 3. So that's 1 half, negative, negative 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Reciprocal property, I can get rid of that negative by taking the reciprocal. So that gives me 2 to the 1 power plus 3, which equals 5. So in 7 and 8, if I were to graph these, and I could look very basically at these. This is a, a number greater than 1, so it would be a growth function. It's being raised to the um, second power minus x. So start out growth function, reflect horizontally. And you say, well, OK, then shouldn't it head toward 2 or shouldn't it head toward infinity? Except this isn't asking as I go off the graph to the left or off the graph to the right. It's asking specifically at 3. Well, at 3, the limit is going to be equal to the function because exponential functions are continuous on the domain. So it would just be the value of the function, and that's why we can use direct substitution. Same thing with number 8. Number less than 1, so it's going to be a decay function to start. And then it's flipped horizontally. And this direction to the left would be 3. Up here would be positive infinity. But it's not asking as I go off to the left or as I go off to the right. It's asking at negative 2. At negative 2, the limit will equal the function, which I found through direct substitution. So that is our limits of exponential functions. It's a small, pretty easy lesson as long as you can kind of sort through the different possibilities there.